First things first, respect to the research team for finding this hilarious movie. In the opening scene, a drunk woman is crying to a religious totem pole because she hasn't been touched by a man in a long time. She hits the pole's face, breaking a piece of wood that looks like a nose. Suddenly, lightning strikes, making the nose erect. Several naked men come out of the wood and grant her the wish all night long. Years later, the emperor of an eastern Korean region is telling the story to a councilman. The broken piece of the nose has been a valuable artifact ever since, but the emperor accidentally touches it seductively triggering its power. A few minutes later, the councilman and the emperor limp out of the chamber. The emperor throws the nose into the streets, scared that it will be triggered again. Eventually, it is found by a woman who wonders what the nose is used for. All of a sudden, the village is surrounded by half-naked men who grab every adult they can to make love. They don't even spare the poor animals and leave the village a mess. When everything calms down, an old priest performs a ritual on the sacred nose. It is put into a wine bottle and buried deep into the Ground. Everyone in the village promises to never talk about the incident again, and it is soon forgotten. Then, we are introduced to a town in the northern region, where the women are the breadwinners of the family. They make all the important decisions while men are expected to take care of the babies and do household work. In this village, the primary responsibility of a man is to satisfy their wives every night for hours. For the same reason, all married men are constantly tired and cannot work outside of the house. Lucky buggers. One day, a group of thugs from another village are enjoying a meal at a local restaurant. They pick a fight with Bion, a guy in his 20s who sells rice cakes for a living. Initially, Bion keeps quiet, controlling his anger to the best of his abilities. But when the thugs cross a line, he single-handedly beats them all. A group of women watches him closely, discussing how lengthy his weapon must be. An older lady laughs at them for assuming such an absurd thing because she knows Bion has no game inside his pants. As she tells them the story of how she found out, we are taken to a flashback. One night, Bion was selling rice cakes as usual when he came across a woman bathing out in the open. She called him into the tub and proceeded to undress him, but it turned out he had a straw-sized penis. The women laugh and start looking at Bion in a different light. He is known in his village for being impotent when it comes to certain matters. Bion cannot argue because he knows it is true. Hopefully, Bion will find magic for his penis soon. In the following scene, we are introduced to Bion's older brother, Kang Mok. Unlike Bion, Kang Mok is known for being a manly man who could satisfy any woman's needs but chooses not to. When he goes into the river to bathe, a group of women of all ages gathers to watch him. They long for a man with his assets and have tried everything to seduce him but nothing works on Kang Mok. Later that night, Bion is in a restaurant drinking in misery. A man touches him inappropriately to check if the rumors are true, which causes a fight between them. Kang Mok quickly comes to his brother's rescue and carries him home. On their way, they encounter a woman named Dal Gang dancing on a bridge. Mesmerized by her beauty, they fall into the water. She walks away right after, but her performance keeps playing in both of their minds. While drying their clothes, Kang Mok recounts the day when his brother's genitals shrunk because of a mistake. What most people don't know is that Bion was born with a normal penis, but when he was 19, his pants lit on fire and took his underwear with it. To stop the fire, Kang Mok repeatedly kicked him in the nuts. It saved Bion's life, but confirmed that he will never have a child. The brother's relationship hasn't been the same since the incident, but no matter how much they fight, at the end of the day, they always have each other's back. Too bad they don't also have each other's penis. The next day, Bion overhears a bunch of guys talking about Dao Gang. She just moved to the village, but has managed to catch everyone's attention. Rumor has it that she bathes in the river every night at 8 p.m. The group decides to watch her later that day. Bion also joins them and is made fun of since he can watch beautiful girls all day long, but cannot do anything about it. Soon, Dal Gang arrives and blows them away with her beauty. She accidentally loses her sandal in the water, and the men jump, hoping to be the one to help her. At last, she gets the sandal herself and walks away. The next morning, Dal Gang wakes up to a box of food outside her hut. She devours it, thankful to whoever put it there. Later that day, she catches Beyond placing a similar box, this time with flowers, in front of the hut. Dal Gang decides to take an early swim today and is spotted by another group of perverted men. 
They cannot get their eyes off her body, but are soon caught by their wives. Instead of talking to their husbands, the women attack Dao Gang for trying to seduce married men. Kang Mok, who is cutting wood nearby, sees this and runs to save her from the lunatics. After everything calms down, they make friends with each other and share a brief conversation. Later at night, Kang Mok tells his brother to start preparing for a wedding because he has found a wife for himself. The wife turns out to be none other than Dao Gang, heartbroken by the news, beyond storms away. He goes to the bridge and drowns in his thoughts. Somewhere nearby, the old priest and his disciple are trapped in a net set of wild animals. They have been tangled for hours and need immediate help. Bion hears them and saves their lives. The priest listens to Bion's concerns and suggests a way he can reverse his impotence and become the best woman pleaser in the entire country. Bion is asked to drink only a sip of wine from the bottle that was buried with the sacred nose long ago. The priest continues explaining the consequences of drinking more than a sip, but Bion is no longer interested. He digs the wine out of the ground, finishes the entire bottle, and passes out drunk for more than a day. When he wakes up again, even little insects and wild mushrooms are attracted to his crotch. On his way home, he founds out every man in the village has been drafted to war, but he missed the draft since he was drunk. Because of this, he is the only man left in the village. In Kang Mok's absence, he is to take care of the house, the business, and most importantly, Kang Mok's wife. At night, Bion cooks food for his sister-in-law and accidentally walks in on her sleeping in an erotic position. Because of his newly repaired genitals, he has a hard time controlling himself. To get rid of the sex drive, he chops wood the entire entire night and drinks a pond dry. As expected, he has to pee after drinking so much water, which is when he finds out his new penis is basically a fire hose. At the same time, the princess and her guards are passing through the jungle below the hill. Chaos ensues when a wildfire spreads and people start to run, but they are ultimately saved when Beyond puts out the fire by urinating from the top of the hill. Not just that, but at one point, he urinates on the sun and dims its light for a second. The women in the village are sick of spending their nights alone because of their husband's absence. Hence, on hearing news about the new and powerful manhood, they all grow excited. A barwoman who saw the water hose action tells everyone else about it, using a fish as an example. But the women will only believe it when they see Beyond's equipment with their own eyes. At night, they gather outside his house and spy on him. The man seems to be juggling a piece of cloth, but both his hands are by his sides and his legs don't leave the ground. The group's suspicions are proven to be true when Beyond turns around, displaying himself in all his glory. The next time Beyond goes out to sell the rice cakes, he encounters several women trying to seduce him. Some are more subtle, while others flash him directly. Still, Beyond keeps his stance and controls himself. One night, the barwoman loses her patience and breaks into his house, determined to make love to him. Beyond senses her attraction and claims that she cannot handle him. In retaliation, the barwoman laughs because she has been with more men than there is hair on his head. Beyond takes it as a challenge and rocks her night. The noise wakes the entire village and in a few minutes, a crowd of women comes to his house, waiting for their turn to get in bed with him. When he is done with the barwoman, she gets a nosebleed. She proudly claims that she she will need at least 10 business days to recover. One after another, every woman in the village is pleased by Beyond, but his stamina never runs out. He doesn't differentiate between the young and the old ones and treats them all with the same amount of love. By the morning, he has had intercourse with every single woman in the village, except Dao Gang. In the next scene, the princess tells the emperor about the unnaturally long genitals in the town. The emperor makes his guard kidnap Beyond and bring him to the palace. Let me get a look at this dick, says the emperor. He is then given a chance to free his brother and bring him back from the war. All he has to do is participate in a weightlifting competition and win. But the kick is that he cannot use his hands to carry the weight. Beyond accepts the challenge and goes against the champion of the lifting competition. Initially, he struggles because he isn't aroused. The princess realizes this and gives him a push by eating a banana seductively. After watching her, Beyond hoists several kilograms of weight and wins the competition. As promised, the soldiers go to the war zone to bring Kang Mok back, but they do not find him, which means he must have died. 
Depressed about his brother's death, Bion refuses to talk to anyone, making the women thirsty for his love again. They try to catch his attention time and again, but nothing works. Simultaneously, the village is hit by the worst drought of the decade. The scarcity of water and food makes Dalgang sick. After a week of fighting the disease, she is on the verge of death. No doctor has a way to save her, but one day, Bion calls a spiritual monk to his house. The man suggests that the only way to save Dalgang is for someone to make love to her. Since Kang Mok is dead, he thinks it won't be a problem for Bion to take responsibility. Bion thinks about it for hours before finally making love to Dalgang at night. Like the monk had predicted, she feels a lot better the next day. The old priest and the emperor are worried about the drought that is starting to kill people from starvation. The priest reveals that the sacred female bear who lives in the woods is not happy with the people of the empire. Hence, she has brought drought upon them as punishment. Time for Biang to diddle that bear. To satisfy her, one must sacrifice their life to her. Back in the village, all women get sick at the same time, including Dal Gang, and find out they are pregnant with Beyond's children. At the same time, their husbands return from war, but are not told about what happened in their absence. A few days pass, but the women are no longer satisfied with their husbands' sex drives. Then, one day, Kang Mok returns from the war, revealing that he lost a leg. The men also discover that their wives have been impregnated by Bion. Unable to face his brother and everyone else, Bion volunteers to be the sacrifice the village needs to end the drought. The women weep at the loss of such a magnificent man, but the officials have already made the decision. Bion enters the cave with the bear and waits to be attacked. Some time passes, but the rain never comes. Everyone assumes that the ritual failed and that Beyond sacrificed his life for nothing. But then, we see Beyond making love to the sacred bear, satisfying her in a different way than the priest wanted him to. The plan works, and the village is blessed with heavy rainfall. The scene then cuts to a few years later. The tale of the legendary libido is still narrated around the country. Beyond's sons have grown up and have inherited water hose power from their father. In the last scene, the princess is on a boat, telling her friends about the time she met the one and only sexual legend. The man rowing the boat turns around and reveals that he is the said legend. That boat is gonna rock. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.